We finished kind of touring the remote part in, I suppose, August 2003, and we gave ourselves kind of a month off to uh, kind of let our thoughts uh, gather together again, you know, because being on tour is very um, kind of uh, detached, sort of, from any kind of normality, you know. On the road, it's kind of, it's quite difficult to write, I guess. You can only really do acoustic guitars and, you know, singing in the back of the bus. And there was some stuff, and then we'd take that away and kind of work on it and, you know, pick bits out and stuff like that. There was quite a lot of things, like, you know, we three CDs worth of stuff, so maybe about you know, 40 songs. But they're all just little bits, just like, you know, scratchy guitar in the back of the bus and things. So. Straight after we went up to the Highlands. We got a place up in a place called Glen Elgin, which is on the um, west coast, uh, very close to the Isle of Skye. And spent, you know, a few weeks at a time, just locked in a old house uh, with our gear set up in the living room. It proved to be really good, and then we came up with some really good ideas. Over the next six months, we're up there or in Edinburgh and people's like flats or in my flat in London, I was living in London at the time, pretty much piecing together all these songs. You can work on little acoustic things in a flat or in a studio and then go back up and properly write with all your gear and the highlands and just section off one room and all live like a holiday camp basically and cook communally at night and chat about stuff and it was pretty good fun. And then eventually after about six months it started to form into an album you know but it never sounded like an album until you know, we actually had it in our hands. Towards the end of the remote part, me and Rod had definitely got into a, a style of working and a way of working, and that needed to be kind of smashed apart. And it took sort of Alan and Gavin to do that, really. I think the way we did this one was definitely kind of more organic, especially because with Gavin and Alan joining the band, it was kind of a whole new way of doing things for us, so we just had to see what was going to work out and how Alan and Gavin would fit in. I think all of us weren't sure about what was going to happen, and that was the most exciting thing about it. I mean, obviously, we've been playing um, with Alan since 2000, so that's like, you know, he always felt like a member of the band anyway. This album was going to have people throwing in new ideas, especially me being a guitarist, and Rod's always been the only guitarist, so there's, only, there's certain things he does which are good, but then if you get someone else throwing in an idea, because I'm a different style of guitarist to Rod, so when you throw that in, and that, he, might not, he, might, he might be like, oh, you know, I might not like that, but it kind of works together. And there's, I've got different tastes and influences and then Rod's got, so with what Rod does normally, along with Roddy, because he's used to working with him and then me coming into that as well, it's going to change it. We actually came to do songwriting. Gavin had been in the band for like, you know, 18 months. So it felt, to me, it just felt like a band anyway. It felt like a fresh new band. And it was actually quite exciting to see what was going to happen. When Roddy had spoken to me originally and asked me to join the band, he had, he had said that, you know, he wanted, he wanted to make a really different record. And, you know, obviously he knew that I, you know, wrote songs myself. So I suppose he's seen that as a, a good thing as well, you know, to uh, add to the making of a, a different Idlewild record. When we started recording the album, we went to Sweden with Dave Engel, the producer who did the last one. Mainly because the studio um, is, Tambourine Studios is very, you know, it's an antique shop, it's really cool, it's, it's where, you know, the Cardigans have recorded a lot of their stuff, and Franz Ferdinand recently recorded, and Malm was a lovely town, it's Christmas time, it just seemed like, seemed like a really good idea. And we did two weeks there, and then we came home, and then in typical fashion, it's happened on every album, we decided that the first session was not great. I mean, those sessions were good, but they weren't, you know, brilliant, they weren't huge, you know, they weren't what we expected. You know, basically we didn't push ourselves enough, I think. I suppose 
we hadn't really got enough songs ready for our record, but we had a, bu a bunch of songs we were quite keen that we'd have for a while to, to record and kind of put down before we got sick of them, I suppose. Um, and I think we kind of fell quite quickly into our old habits. Um, even though we had these new people in the band, it was the first time we recorded with Gavin and Alan. Um, it was still a bit too familiar. And we've always had a rethink and written new songs. And um, So this time we decided to work with a different producer. And we looked for, I mean, we spoke to loads of people just to see who was available and who was busy. And um, we spoke to Tony Hoffer and liked what he was saying and the ideas and he liked the songs and stuff. And he was keen to work in LA because that's where he works all the time. Going across to California was exactly what we needed to do. It was a different environment, a different person who pulled the songs apart again, you know, and kind of put them back together in his order, which was also our order. He creates a really, really nice environment to work. And um, yeah, he brought a lot, a lot out of this record. There was a sense, I think, with all of us, that, you know, that unpredictability where you think, I hope this works out, and then obviously it did. But you have that sense before you go out there, you think, because you don't know the producer that well, and you don't know, God, am I going to get along with him? Am I going to, you know, is he going to be is it the same, you know, idea? And it's just a case of, well, we have to try it out. But it was a completely different thing, just going over there and arriving, and thinking, well, we're we going to be here for eight weeks recording the record. That's great. One thing that Tony really brought out of me was to. Stop me so vague about things, you know. I'd maybe have like ten lines and it would be put down into five and with half the verse and suddenly just the song makes more, more, more sense and it was almost like, uh, to me this record sounds like a series of like public service announcements or something. You know what I mean? It's so specific and it's just very easy to understand. Mountains wouldn't part for me They have no uncertainty I'm just a passing well, It's the first record we've made as this band with this lineup. Um, obviously there's, there's always going to be a thread from, from everything before because uh, we've, you know, me and Ruddy have been writing songs together for so long so there is a uh, you can definitely tell where it's come from, and some of the songs, you know, that didn't make it on were just too similar to the stuff we'd done before. So the, there definitely wasn't, you know, a, a complete change in direction or anything like that. You know, I think it's just an improvement. I think we've just gradually got better at writing songs, better at playing. Then we'll end where we begin. I understand it, but I don't show it, so I won't think it, and maybe we'll be there. It's much more stripped back and direct than our records before, and because of that, you know, it has a certain frailty to it. I suppose there's, a, you know, it's everything's quite exposed, um, which is what I like about it. Actually, I think it's um, kind of has a charm in that way. I suppose that everything's not quite perfect, and it's not, you know, got so much of a sheen to it. It's just kind of fragile almost. We couldn't have done made the record that we made if we'd done it in Scandinavia or in Scotland or in, you know, Wales or London. It needed to be in a kind of an alien landscape like Los Angeles, which for us was an alien landscape. It was just so strange and we got so into it really. And I think that really did reflect on the music we were making at the time. album particularly is much more kind of mature in the music. This certainly feels like the best representation of me as a singer and I think as Rod as a guitar player, Colin as a drummer, you know Alan as a guitar player and Gavin as a bass player, I think that that's it's pretty much, I mean not to put our previous records down at all because at the time they were, but I feel that this is like you know it's taken us sort of eight years of writing songs to actually come to this point when it's it seems we've distilled it all kind of in the perfect 
taking away so far, you know, not to say that in the future there'll be records that will be, you know, maybe even better or maybe even, you know, more concise, but this is definitely the most concise piece of work we've done.